What's up everyone, Aaron Nagler here with your Packers Daily Chat for Cheesehead TV coming to you live everywhere on the internet that you could possibly be because we're dedicated to you, Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Hello to everybody already jumping in the chat. Good to see everybody. I'm sorry that I missed you all yesterday. Um, live today, we'll be dark again tomorrow and then back on Thursday at 5 o'clock. Uh, always good to come and chat with you fine folks about the salary cap, which seems to be all the rage as far as what Packers fans are talking about. Thanks to Tom Silverstein dropping a little nugget last night saying that the Packers perhaps were not as flush with cap space as previously thought. Now, some bit of clarification here since people seem to have been running with this for a, about 24 hours. The Packers know exactly and have known exactly where they are in relation to the cap and its limit, etc. Uh, what Tom is alluding to is finding out on the outside of the organization, uh, something he had heard apparently from uh, a few different sources, uh, that the Packers were much closer up against the cap than previously thought uh, from reports, uh, again, outside the building. But it sure sounds like they're hovering around $13 million over the cap, five of which has got to be dedicated to their rookie class, around five. Um, they have roughly, this is very rough, and it's all very fluid, uh, roughly $8 million or so to play with. Um, now, obviously, traditionally, throughout the last decade plus, they have liked to keep around an $8 million cushion. So could they be done making moves? Yeah, they could. Could they make some adjustments to contracts that are already in-house to open up some space? I think they could. I doubt they will. Uh, could they cut people to create some space? That is also a possibility. I don't see any of that happening. But those are the types of moves that could be in play over the course of the next month or so as they lead up to the draft. So now that I've said all that, I look forward to all your questions here in the chat about anything else except for that. <laughs> uh, only here to find out what I need to be overly upset about today. Jim, that's an excellent idea. Always come to your Packers Daily Chat to find out what the hive mind is uh, raising their pitchforks on. Unless you're talking about me being upset uh, having to get 100 Cole Madison questions in a row. You never really know. Uh, in your opinion, outside of Rodgers, who is the best Packer currently still on the roster? Uh, Nick, it's got to be Devontae Adams. Uh, I think there are a lot of... Uh, you know, really talented people on the Packer squad. I think Kenny Clark is probably in that conversation, but to me, it's Devontae Adams. I don't think there's, I think that's pretty cut and dry. Tony Brown will step up in Breland's absence. Yes, Nick, uh, Bashaw Breland signing with the Kansas City Chiefs yesterday on a one-year deal. I very much agree that I think Tony Brown enters into the equation of why they felt comfortable allowing Breland to walk. I'm not sitting here telling you in mid to late March, that he's the answer and obvious plug-in. Um, you know, there's a lot to play out with the draft and even possibly free agency, but um, I think the promise he showed, his trajectory, hopefully, from year one to year two, you have to think he'll be given every opportunity to fill those shoes. Tremont got his roster bonus already. They aren't cutting him. I mean, I don't think so, but after the draft, if they land a couple of corners, premium Early on, you know, if the, that's the way the board falls and they get to training camp and they decide that they can move on without him and thereby don't have to pay him his salary, it's a possibility. Outside, unlikely, but a possibility. Big gap in safety unless we draft a playmaker. Mark, I could not agree more. Uh, I was asked last night, I did a kind of a quitter, quitter Q&A, a Twitter Q&A. Um, and I was asked, you know, where is the, I guess, biggest hole on the roster? And it's definitely safety. I don't think there's any question there. Um, I know they, they were, had talks with uh, Riley, the former giant safety, yesterday. Um, but it doesn't sound like they're going to go down that road. Um, they need someone opposite Amos. And who that's going to be, I don't know. It certainly shouldn't be on the roster right now. Looking at the depth chart, it's a bit scary. Uh, do you honestly believe Kevin King can stay healthy for a full season? Sure. Why not? The past is not prologue. Yes, he's been injured. He's ended up on injured reserve two years in a row. Plenty of guys are injured early in their career, bounce back and come and make major contributions. Aaron Rodgers being a great example. 
You know, every time he stepped on the field his first couple years, he got hurt. People labeled him soft and made of glass. And then he came back and played a bunch of great football for the Packers. So obviously it's a little different with quarterback. You know, he's not getting hit. He's not running as much, et cetera. I get all that. But um, yes, I mean, what's the other? The other alternative is to say, no, he's an absolute bust, failure, going to always be injured. I'm never going to trust the guy. I'm not going to root for him. I, I am I'm pulling for his failure. Because essentially, that's what you're doing if you're saying that you don't expect him to ever stay healthy. We're, we don't have access to the medical information. We have no, we're not privy to any of that information. The backers have him on the roster. They're counting on him. So am I. What should we do with Balaga? Play him in his last year of his deal. Um, when he's on the field, which again, it's not always 100% of the time, uh, but when he's on the field, he's one of the better right tackles in the league. And he played very well down the stretch last year. Uh, yeah, are you going to have to uh, have some contingency plans? Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons Turner was signed so early and for a decent amount of money. I don't think the question is they signed Turner, they overpaid because he's just going to play guard. I think the fact that he's played four positions, one of which is right tackle, he's had a number of starts at tackle, um, some decent starts too, you know, he will be able to step in. Whereas before it was Jason Spriggs and the fall off was massive. Now, I don't think Turner's as good as Balaga, at least not yet. Um, but I think he's definitely an upgrade from Spriggs. Um, but when Balaga's on the field, he's A+, plus, man. His, his game is right there. So why would you get rid of him? To save some money? I'd much rather keep my quarterback upright. Uh, Bakhtiari is the second best player. I would have agreed a year ago, but I think there was a change in the guard last year. And I know he's got the all-pro pellets on the wall. I, I'm not taking that away from him. But to me, Adams is the second best player. That's just me. Is Mo Wilkerson coming back? Daniel, I have to think it's a possibility. Um, maybe they sign him closer to the draft. Um, I think right now he'd probably be hard-pressed to pass a physical. So um, maybe after the draft. I think the, the possibility still exists. I think the door is open, but uh, I don't think anything is imminent. Am I wrong to be worried about the lack of depth at offensive line? Turner was a nice signing, but I feel we still need more depth. Ryan, I could not agree more. It's why I named the chat uh, as I did. You know, they're still in need of help there. I think without question, you look at how things really fell apart last year when, when they had to kind of go to some of their depth guys. Um, I don't think there's any question. They definitely need more help along the interior. And while Turner is a nice signing and his versatility helps you, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see them draft a tackle, maybe even two, in this draft. Does Josh Jackson's skill set indicate he may be able to get some work in at safety? I know that's a popular theory. I'd be surprised if they made that switch this offseason. I think they'll give him every opportunity to continue to play corner and show some improvement from year one to year two. Obviously, he had some very rough outings last year, but uh, you know they drafted him as a corner. You know, he played one year of corner uh, as a starter in college. Um, I think they're just going to give him every opportunity to get all the reps he can in that corner this offseason and hope to see that development from year one to year two, take that jump and start translating some of that you know, obvious athletic ability to um, some better play on the field. Trade pick 30 to acquire more depth. How about just draft a player at 30? I'd much rather uh, draft a promising young offensive stud lineman than pick somebody else's person up. Uh, can we please pick up a backup quarterback? Tim, man, I'm with you, but they're going off the shelf pretty quickly here. The one name that's still out there that I would really uh, intriguing, I think they, I, I would hope they would make a call is Robert Griffin III. He's got you know, a history with Lafleur. Uh, I just think he's an instant upgrade over Deshaun Kaiser. Um, but there is absolutely no indication that they are making any moves or any calls in that regard. Now that said, that doesn't mean they're not. You know, we don't, we're not privy to everything they're doing, everything they're trying to do. But man, if they are content to roll in the next season with Deshaun Kaiser as their backup quarterback, I really question that thinking. That's just me. 
Jackson can't go three plays without Holt grabbing someone. John, I've said this ad nauseum here on this here chat. That is the A number one thing that he has got to get right in his game. Um, his really bad habit of grabbing guys down the field, it's costly. It gives, you, gives up first downs. It gives up first downs on plays he's not even involved in, away from the ball. I completely agree with your assessment there. That is the A number one thing. Anybody who's watched this chat for any length of time knows that this is the number one bugaboo when it comes to Josh Jackson. I don't care if he's playing safety or corner. He, can, he has simply got to learn to keep his hands off of people. And it was a problem. It was an issue in college. It was on his tape. He was very handsy coming out. And nothing changed last year, that's for sure. So, you know, this offseason, he has got to get that fixed because you cannot trust a guy who's going to cost you first downs and potentially games just simply by the fact that he can't keep his hands to himself downfield. Are you still high on Hollywood Brown? Alex, you bet I am. Whew. Instant speed. Add him to the offense. And I know he's coming off a of surgery, an injury, etc. I get all that, but man, I love it. I love the playmaking potential there. I love the idea of him going deep for a Rodgers bomb. Bring it. And I think he's great with the ball in his hand. You, I think you could really use him on some of their short stuff. Um, open up stuff like that smoke to the outside that every team in the NFL seems to love now. Get the ball in his hand, make an alley, get out of his way. I'm all in. Bastian from Germany. What do you think about Equinemia St. Brown? I thought he had a really promising rookie year. Obviously, he was a bit slow coming on early on, but I thought as the year went on, as the season progressed, he showed a lot of potential. You really saw his ability after the catch. You really saw his ability to make yards after the catch. Um, I thought he did a really good job on some of those, you know, those plays I was just talking about, that smoke, wide screen, wide receiver screen. Um, and I don't, it's funny because you look at all the tools that he has, he could absolutely be a major contributor uh, his second season. I think it's all going to be about how the rotation shakes out. Obviously, MVS, Kumaro, these guys, he's going to have to like compete for snaps, but yeah, I mean, he's got a pretty high ceiling, a higher ceiling than I would have thought when he was drafted. I don't think there's any doubt there. Let's head over to Twitter, see what's going on. Matthew starts us off with two parts. I asked you a while back about hidden gems in the draft, and you said wait until after the combine. So I ask again, who are some hidden gems to watch on day three? Second, if Green Bay drafts a tight end, do you think they keep four on the roster? Thanks. Matthew, I'll talk about the second part first. Um, it's a possibility if they draft one, absolutely. I mean, they kept four, or they had four with practice squad edition last year, uh, it wouldn't surprise me. They've done four before, at least under Thompson. If those are the best guys and it works and you need maybe the help on special teams, etc., yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Uh, as far as hidden gems, the one guy who's really kind of intrigued me is a day three guy, is Max Crosby. He's an edge player from Eastern Michigan. Um, he hasn't played a whole lot in coverage, and you do worry about his maybe uh, translating his game to the NFL. Um, he may, you know, the run game, he'll probably need a lot of work. But as far as a raw pass rushing talent, take a look at Max Crosby. Um, really productive guy the last two years. And um, just really like his game. He really knows how to use his hands. Got a lot of speed off the edge. His ability to cut the angle to the quarterback, um, it's pretty damn good. It reminds me of Gilbert, his rookie year. Um, just something like, you know, you need a little extra pass rush on day three. Maybe a guy who could uh, develop into something down the line. He's one to watch. Definitely. I know most people want to see the Packers get offensive line talent in the draft. Josh, yes, I'd be one of them. Uh, but what about running back? I can't imagine us going into 2019 with only two starters, Jones and Williams. Uh, Josh, I do think they will add a running back in this draft. I think it'll be day three, as is their want. Um, you know, I know a lot of people have asked about free agents. Maybe there's a name or two out there that they could look at. I do think, though, that they will, they seem to prefer, you know, bringing in guys via the draft and or undrafted free agency. And I think that's the route they'll go again. Um, now, if there's incredible value, maybe they go even, they find a back early on, maybe a David Montgomery type. But um, I do think they will add a running back, at least one, to kind of, you know, like you say, lighten the load there a little bit. <clears throat> fans were freaking out about the salary cap number. Then things seemed to get clarified later. Perhaps we as fans should just calm down 
and see what kind of team Guten Company put on the field. Well, I mean, yes and no. Yes, calm down, please, by all means. But don't just wait and see what kind of team they put on the field because then I'd be out of a job. And, you know, it's what I do. I talk about the Packers every day with you fine folks. But your point is right. I mean, Tom was clearly putting something out there that um, it was happening in real time. People were saying something that he was hearing. Sources were telling him. And so he put it out there. And everyone free. Oh, the Packers, Russ Ball screwed up, etc. No, the salary cap is a very fluid thing. And we're never going to be completely on top of where it is um, in, the, in the same way the Packers are. Um, so yes, absolutely, especially when it comes to the salary cap. People need to take a step back. Um, there was something I pointed out this morning in uh, Jim's piece about Adrian Amos over at PackersNews.com. The fact that Amos and the Packers agreed to terms almost immediately at the start of the legal tampering period um, you know, the first reports of him signing with the Packers didn't come out until that next following morning. It tells you all that time that Packers fans were bitching about, oh, the Packers aren't doing anything. The Packers aren't doing anything. They had already done something. In fact, they had done a couple of things. They'd already signed guys. It just didn't come out until 24 hours later. Food for thought. Don't be a prisoner of the Twitter moment. That's all I'll say. Let's head back over to live chat. March Madness picks. Well, oh, Zach, I haven't even looked. Uh, I might do that tonight. And that will be the equivalent of me throwing darts. Is Corey Banksy? Oh, you know, I hadn't thought of it, but it's a possibility, right? Uh, have you heard of any new free agent visits? Nope, I have not, other than the giant safety who came and went yesterday. Do you think Raven Green has a chance to be the sidekick to Amos? I do, actually. I mean, right now, if they had to suit up on Sunday, I think he'd be the choice. But um, I do think some more uh, bodies will be brought in at the safety position. I hope he gets a shot, though. I think you've seen the promise. You've seen the athleticism on display starting in camp last year. He got some play during the season. Um, you know, I've long way to go there. There's certainly potential. And right now, yeah, you'd have to say he's in, at least in the running. Cohen's piece on bundling and trading up to be very aggressive in the draft was pretty compelling. Possibly not room for 10 players on the 53. Thoughts? Uh, Corey, yes, I tweeted it out. Uh, I actually was talking to Michael while he was writing it because we were going back and forth about the, the draft charts, uh, the creation of Jimmy Johnson's chart, etc. Um, yeah, and I, lo- I loved his piece. I loved how he broke it down with each chart with using what it would take on Jimmy's chart and Chase Stewart's and Rich Hill's. Um, they absolutely have the you know, ammunition to get up really high in the draft. Now, of course, making that kind of move, you, you got to be 100 billion percent sold on whoever it is. And only Brian Gutekunst can make that call and can even begin to approach to, you know, have knowledge of who that might be. Uh, Josh Allen, um, who know, maybe one of the linemen, uh, maybe Devin Bush or Devin White, who knows? I, I have no idea who he might have an eye on if, it, if he were even to entertain uh, jumping up into the top 10, top 5. But uh, if you haven't read Michael's piece over, the, over at The Athletic, I highly recommend you do. Why do I feel like Jordy to the Patriots? Oh, no, not a Jordy question. Why do I feel like the Jordy to the Patriots would be lethal? Literally, the idea of Brady to Jordy would be unstoppable. I don't know, man. I don't see it. I mean, I know everyone's, you know, Jordy's going to sign with the Patriots and get a ring, etc. But, and Jordy did come on at the end of last year. I will give him that. But he's, re- he's reaching the end. I don't know. I think it'd be much more like Chad Johnson at the end of the career there up in New England. But that's just me. Are you friendly with Peter Bukowski? Um, yeah, as friendly as can be. I mean, I've met the man. We've had drinks. Nice guy. I don't know him that well. Um, our paths never really crossed when we were both at Sports Illustrated, but yeah, he's fine. Good guy. Uh, Nags, what happens during player visits? That's a good question, Julian. Um, a whole lot. They meet people. They, you know, will, uh, so obviously they'll have representation with them and, uh, well, some more than others. Uh, and, you know, they'll talk, you know, the coaches, they'll talk with personnel people. Um, Sometimes there's a workout involved. Sometimes there's medical things involved. Um, It can be a very long day. Um, Sometimes 
more often than not, they won't talk financials. That'll be left to a separate conversation. But uh, they will, you know, talk to the coaching staff about how the staff views them in their system, how they plan on hopefully using them if they do decide to come on board. It's been known that some guys get a little cagey because they don't want to give too much away, but they do want to sell them on the program. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's kind of a uh, – Elliot Wolf, you always used to say, it's a very case-by-case basis. And you've heard um, Brian Gutekunst use that same kind of language. Um, but, you know, it, it's, uh, it can be fluid, and a lot of it is trying to sell the program, essentially. Because if they've gone through the trouble now of bringing them into the facility, it's clear they want – they have some kind of interest, Right. You should start every chat with no Jordy questions allowed. Jordy questions are fine. Look, I get, I get the interest. I get the passion. I get the connection. Hell, Jordy was one of my favorite players when he was a Packer. But, yo, it's time to move on. Uh, we should learn from what the Cowboys did with Byron Jones, start Jackson at safety. Man, I, w- I just think Byron Jones is a much better tackler than Jackson has ever shown. But that's just me. Uh, did they ask what animal they would be? Julia, that was, that's at the combine. Although those, those questions seem to be uh, fewer in frequency these days. Is Noah Fant worth the number 12 pick? It's all in the behi- eye of the beholder, right? If they have him, you know, if they've done their due diligence scouting-wise and got their board set and... No offense, the guy far and away, blue chip, first tier, tight end, take him no matter what type player by their grading system, then yeah, sure. Would I take him at 12? No, but I ain't in charge. Running back on day two of the draft. I I think probably, I referenced that during the Twitter Q&A, I think day three is probably more likely. But if there's a value there on day two, uh, like there was when they took Eddie Lacy, yeah, it's a possibility. Big fan from the UK. What's up, Tanya? Thanks for checking us out. Any word on Eric Berry in Green Bay? Would think Mike Smith would have the inside scoop. Maybe Mike Smith having the inside scoop is why they're staying away. No, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Um, I would be very surprised if the Packers were in on that simply because of the medical, um, conservative nature of the medical group in Green Bay. Berry is dealing with a chronic um, couple set, a set of injury issues, and... I know any team that's going to bring him in is going to have to vet that pretty thoroughly. After this offseason for the Browns, I'd expect Elliott Wolf to get a GM job soon. Yeah, William, I agree. I think if not this year, definitely the next. But, man, I know know Elliott, and I was really pulling for him to be the GM for the Packers. Didn't happen. Um, You know, I... I'd be, I'd be absolutely lying if I didn't say, I really hope he gets a gig somewhere and really sticks it to the Packers a couple times because that guy did everything right and obviously he was in the shadow of his dad and all he did was uh, everything the Packers asked and improved every year, uh, moved up the chain of command, uh, was denied the opportunity to interview other places on a number of occasions, never made a fuss, never groused about it, just went back to work, did his job, and then didn't get the gig. So... I feel for the guy, and I hope he lands a gig sooner rather than later. Uh, he avoids the questions in caps. I don't see a question in caps. They just go by fast. Sorry, guys. Where's the crooked lamp at? It's uh, at my old place. I'm not here. Why is Justin Houston still out there? Good question, Jonathan. I would tend to think he's looking to get paid, and I don't think anybody wants to fork over a bunch of money for a guy Uh, approaching the back end of his career. Now, um, as time goes on, maybe that asking price goes down. Maybe he's more open to an incentive-laden deal. But given his production last year, the tape is good. i got to think it's about the money. And not not that I'm surprised, but um, I just think most teams are going to wait and see if they can get him a little bit cheaper. (laughs) How about Vontez Perfect? Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Oh, No. Burfick should never play in the league again. Release Daniels. Oh, God, is somebody suggesting releasing Mike Daniels? I got somebody asking about trading Mike Daniels last night. Why did people want their team to get worse? That's what I want to know. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's take this really good player and get rid of him. You guys kill me. All right, I'm going to have to jump. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to your questions. They do come by fast and furious, whether they're in all caps or no. Um, 
But thanks so much for checking us out. Like I said, I'll be back Thursday, off again tomorrow, but be back Thursday. Uh, make sure you're checking out everything we do. And hell, you know, like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, wherever the hell you are. Thank you so much for checking us out. We are Cheesehead TV. We're devoted to Packers fans worldwide. Check out our draft guide just for Packers fans at cheeseheadtv.com. You can pre-order it there. Uh, or go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash cheeseheadtv. Uh, five bucks a month supports everything we do, including my podcast, which is exclusive to patrons of our Patreon page. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great night.